We've got three of the issuers on stage to mark this momentous occasion as this Hong Kong becomes the first in Asia to offer retail investors a chance to trade cryptocurrency ETFs. Why is Bitcoin crashing today? I mean, we literally saw a flash crash from around $64,000 to now 59. And what's worse is not that we saw a crash, crashes happen every day with Bitcoin, but actually we're now starting to see a series of lower highs and lower lows indicating a trend change to the negative. And watch today's whole video. I'll share with you what's really causing this, as well as CZ of Binance going to prison and much more. But just understand that today started out so historic. We're here at the live ceremony at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and the market is open. It is 9.30. We're just running a couple minutes behind, but you can see they are assembling in front of the gong. This is a big listing ceremony today, uh, the launch of crypto ETFs. It'll be the first time in Asia retail investors have a chance to trade cryptocurrency ETFs at spot prices. So just like what BlackRock did in America, the BlackRock of China did in Hong Kong to both Bitcoin and ETH. Now, this comes just three months after the U.S. launch of similar ETFs tr tracking spot Bitcoin. Uh, it has drawn billions in dollars of net inflows, also contributing to a surge in a Bitcoin price earlier this year. Year to date, it's about 50 percent. It has hit all time highs last month, over 73,000 U.S. dollars. Now, you can see that the, the Bitcoin ETFs, uh, there's about 14 ETFs that have hit the market today from three different issuers. Uh, those issuers are China. China Asset Management Company, Harvest Global Investments, and Hashkey Exchange. You can see the countdown has started. And the impact from this, the inflows into this, was underwhelming. But there's a lot of people that are overhyping the, the value that that will provide. So you, as an Altcoin Daily subscriber, you were ready for this. You knew that the Hong Kong Bitcoin and ETH ETF launch would be much smaller than Black Rocks in America. The problem is the Hong Kong market is very small. Mainland Chinese investors will not be allowed to invest in China. is very strict on this stuff. It's not there. You're not just going to get to be able to buy access if using a VPN and different things like this is China we're talking about. And how much money actually flowed in on the first full day. We tried to warn everyone to lower expectations regarding Hong Kong especially versus the $25 billion hopium estimate. That said, if you localize numbers, this was big. Just the China AMC Bitcoin ETF took in over $123 million on day one, which already ranks it sixth of 82 ETFs launched in the last three years in Hong Kong and top 20% overall. To put it in perspective, the Hong Kong ETF market is about 40-ish, 45-ish, 48 billion dollars in assets. All ETFs listed in Hong Kong, the US ETFs are over 50. So the US ETFs that we have here, the US spot Bitcoin ETFs, have more in assets, the entire asset space in um, Hong Kong. That's not to say, like, if these things get a billion dollars in assets in the first year, that would be an absolute smashing success. Again, people were expecting much more, which is one of the narratives on why Bitcoin keeps dipping. Another big reason people think we're dipping is because inflows for BlackRock ETF have stopped. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF daily inflow on halt for four days straight. This is coming off a 71 day inflow streak. Now the inflows have stopped, meaning BlackRock clients are no longer buying. And according to the data from BlackRock's official page, the fund has held the same amount of Bitcoin over the last four trading days, leaving a lot of average retail investors to worry to sell their bags in fear. Again, Altcoin Daily subscribers understand this is normal. First of all, most ETFs don't see a flow every day in or out. For the most part, it's going to be zero. That's probably going to be more along the lines of what's normal going forward. Uh, it's standard and normal procedure for an ETF just not to have flows on a given day. There are going to be days and weeks where these things see meaningful outflows. We just haven't really seen it yet, aside from anything from GBTC, like aside from GBTC. And then, of course, the biggest reason Bitcoin had this red wick today, leverage being flushed out, $140 million in levered positions liquidated in four hours as Bitcoin and crypto markets drop, meaning levered long positions were betting that the Bitcoin price would go up. And then when it started to turn down, that liquidated the longs, suppressing price. 
Of course, always good to get this flushed out. And really, in the grand scheme of things, a 20% correction from all time high is normal. This is the fourth 20% correction in BTC in 12 months. Pretty ordinary stuff. I would expect, since we had so much mania into the Bitcoin halving, that post Bitcoin halving for a few months, us to consolidate. We have our next support around the $51,000 BTC price point. We could easily drop to around here. By the way, also where the 200 day moving average is as well. If we take another leg lower, that's where I'd expect price to land. And with Binance, ex Binance CEO CZ sentenced to four months in prison. This was after pleading guilty to one count of violating the Bank Secrecy Act last November. The DOJ was recommending three years. So because this is only four months versus three years, that's a win. And also after those four months, CZ isn't left with nothing. CZ's still a billionaire. As part of his uh, plea agreement, he is allowed to keep his shares in Binance. He has around a 90% stake. Uh, the value of that is around $43 billion. He ranks on uh, Bloomberg's own rich list on number, number 38. So this is one of the wealthiest uh, individuals in the world and by far the wealthiest uh, prison inmates when he, when he eventually does go to, to prison, whether it's for 18 months or three years or, or some time in between. So he, he will still be wildly wealthy and uh, will be um, leaving prison after his, uh, his sentence, uh, a billionaire. We also have Bitcoin OG, Roger Ver. He is the creator of Bitcoin Cash, labeled Bitcoin Jesus back in the day because he was such a proponent for Bitcoin. Think of him as the early Michael Saylor. Just in, Bitcoin Jesus, Roger Ver, charged with $50 million tax evasion Roger was arrested this weekend in Spain with possible extradition to the U.S. The DOJ alleges that Ver evaded paying taxes to the amount of nearly $50 million, conducted mail fraud, and filed false tax returns. To me, this is so shocking because my brother and I were just hanging with Roger in Dubai at Token 2049. We shared a car ride with him to the Karate Combat event, so like a 50-minute car ride where he was just sharing early days stories, talking about jujitsu, which he's into. Honestly, truly was a super nice guy. And while he's being charged with $50 million tax evasion, keep in mind, Roger is literally a multi, multi billionaire. I assume he will just settle slash plea deal and move on, but we'll see. And I did not know this, or I, I was reminded of this, that Roger actually revoked his U.S. citizenship before selling this Bitcoin, and they still find ways to charge him. So he wasn't an American citizen. It was officially over when he sold. If you got value today, hit the like button. Like always, see you tomorrow.